Without further ado, let's talk to Yancy Medeiros about all of this. My brada, there he is. Shoots, brah. What's going on, oh, Yancy? Stop, How you feeling, <laughs> brada? Everything good? Aloha. Full of aloha, man. Always. <laughs> well, congratulations, my friends. Wow. I mean, it's amazing, Thank amazing you. stuff. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. When you were let go from the UFC... How did we feel about the career? Did you want to keep going? Were you one of these guys who was like, I'm UFC or bust? Or did you know that you would keep fighting? Oh, I was going to keep fighting. I wanted to, you know, there's always daughters, but I was like, I felt, I felt like things happened for a reason. And I just kept going. It's like four fights. I was like, wow, I, I did think about it. I'm like, do I really, like, is this really like, you know, what, what I really want to do right now? And I'm like, I'm still training every day. I'm like, hell yeah, nothing ever stops. So I just wanted to get better. I just went back to doing homework, bro. I really felt good, but I'm like, why am I not performing good? Why is it not, why is it not, um, you know, I guess going, going, going with the flow. And then I realized I was like, wow, I train with the best. I train with Max. I train with Nate. Like nothing is, nothing is wrong. I just got to work on me, which was a lot of it was my injuries. I couldn't, like, everybody's got injuries, bro, but I really like worked around it. I'm the type of guy I'd be like, I meet you at the top of the mountain and I'll hop there. Uh, and I just kept going to every top of the mountain and, you know, just bad habits, bad, bad, um, bad habits, uh, working around injuries and leads to bad performance. So I really need to work on myself after I got let go. So is that why you took so much time off in between fights? Yeah. I mean, um, no, like I had, I, I guess, you know, like we got some problem. I had some stuff at home I had to take care of. And there was a lot of things I was settling for myself. But other than that, I was just always trying to work around, work around injuries, work through injuries. And th those are the things I think that was hindering my performance because all my coaches is always like, Yance, you got to be the Yancey in the gym, not the, the Yancey. Did, um, these last four fights because I think I was just overthinking and not being me and this last fight bro, I was happy I had fun and that's what my coach said is like Yance yeah, you gotta go back to having fun you gotta go back to dancing you gotta go back to being the happy-go-lucky guy and I think you know having those losses I was trying to like over like compensate or trying to get that win instead of just being me and that was really the that was really the being at home and that fight week was unreal, bro. It was very foreign for me because I haven't felt that like it was the easiest fight week of my life, bro. Yeah. I was Thursday fight week. I was like going up and down, driving all over the island, taking care of Aryans. And this is me cutting weight. Like it was like, it was, it was meant to be, bro. Everything that happened Saturday was meant to be. And I'm happy that Scott Poker and Bellator let me give back because that was the biggest thing. I took this one fight deal because I was like, bro, Hawaii, like I like give back all these people that gave to me, like I honestly would have took any fight deal they gave me because I wanted to just fight in Hawaii and give back. I bought hella tickets for people just to come. Like that's how much I wanted to give back to the people that all gave to me and still support me to this day. So how did it happen? Because like I said at the top there, it's very rare for something like this to happen. Like they don't do these sorts of yeah. things, especially with names like yourself. I mean, if it's a guy on the undercard who could sell tickets, fine, they'll sign up. But like an established name like you, they don't do this on the main card and all that. How did the deal actually get done? Um, I I honestly believe a lot of it was to do it. Um, um, Mike Colgan, Rich Chow, um, Zach Zach Rosenfield. Um, there's a lot of guys on my management at all kind of just manifested together but this dude Nate um I forget his last name but he asked Scott Coker in a in a in a question or he asked him in an interview and he was like oh yeah Yancey's you know Yancey's um yeah we'll think about it and I seen him tweet that out and I, I posted it I was like bank like I was like oh you didn't say that I'm right here bro I'm ready and I think it kind of just all manifested from from right there like actually and they just kind of snowball effect wow it was like bro it's undeniable i am hawaii i am aloha there's no there's no doubt about it i was like you gotta put me on this card so you know it just it was meant to happen and by the way to be clear uh that dude nate isn't nate diaz right no no okay, no okay. no but i mean um i forget he was an interviewer um, yeah yeah, I forget yeah, yeah. His, um, but i think nate was nate pushing for it too on on social media wasn't he i mean i think that helped yeah you know nate, nate, nate nate's being nate but he was just giving me clout too at the same yeah, time yeah. he's being a genius and a gangster at the same time you know and being the homie you know nate that's right you know nate just as well as i do ariel and yeah he was being a homie and just giving me some clout too 
<laughs> and, and and for you, I mean, like this this uh, this couldn't have worked out better. The stars aligned. You were free. You were able to fight. And the one thing I couldn't help but feel as I'm watching this, and the crowd was buzzing. I was like, man, we've been robbed of of Yancey fighting Hawaii, and I can't imagine what it would be like if Max gets to fight in Hawaii and BJ wanted to fight. Oh, bah. I feel like we've been robbed yes, of these yes. moments, right? Like, don't you feel oh, like man, that this like... could have happened ten other times in the past? Yes, yes, like. It could have happened from the time I started fighting outside of Hawaii. I was like me, Max, all the Hawaii boys always just wanted to give back to Hawaii. Like we ain't making more money, mm. you know, the, the venue's smaller. Like we just wanted to give back to the people. And what was felt that weekend was, oh man, that is the reason why I am the person I am because that was given to me all my life from the time I was born to now, man. And that's the reason why I perpetuate Aloha. And that's the reason why I am, the person I am because it's not the fighting it's it's the manam it's that spirit that was that's always given to us and fortunately you know I can fight and perpetuate my culture and entertain the crowd and my people uh, was there any part of you I mean it's a great story you got all these people there you're finally getting to fight back home it's a lot of pressure you don't want to lose that fight right did you feel more nervous than usual nah bro I didn't I didn't feel I felt I mean if you feel nerves, it's because you just want you just want to do your best. You know, if like, there's nervousness, but everything was like I was gonna have fun in there, win or lose. And when Emmanuel came too, bro, like I got hell of a law. I felt it in him. I was like, bro, this guy, I feel him, he's cultural, you know, and he even walked out to a He walked out to song. BJ's song. Bro, he walked out to BJ's song, but I get it. He's being cultural. So yeah. I, you know All what right. I mean? I, right. I, I was like, oh, I get it. But bro, you gave me two songs to walk out to. <laughs> so I was like singing that song because I was like, oh, I ain't gonna, I'm net, that's BJ's song. I ain't walking out to that. Then so, but he walked out to that. I was like, bro, Emmanuel, you got two songs from me, bro. Yeah. That's double loss. <laughs> And what were you feeling like to hear the crowd like that cheering for you? It's been a while, right? To have crowds and all oh, that. Oh man, yeah. What well, was that the, doing uh, for you? Top of my lungs. It did everything for me. It was, it was from like when Scott Coker hired me and it was my first fight in strike force. And I walked up, I walked out and I was in the mainland of California. The cameras was on me. That's the exact sat. The exit, um, the same exact feeling I felt when when I was walking out in Hawaii, I was like, bro, Hawaii is here. I'm here to show up. I love you, Hawaii. Like, I don't do my best. And, you know, like, that's that's what I want to perpetuate. And that's exactly what I felt, like, that the kid feeling, you know, that that aloha. And I just wanted to keep that full circle. And I will keep that full circle. I needed this fight, and I needed it to be at home because the kid is back, Ariel. <laughs> oh, look at that smile, man. You're on, I don't know if yeah. it's from, you know, just the good vibes, the ganja and the more, I don't know what it's from. You know what I'm Always. talking about? It's all <laughs> of it, all of the above, bro. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. So at what point yeah. do you realize that you've got a long-term deal with them? Do they tell you that night? Um, Cause I know they, they uh, this it, came it, out today, but when do you realize that like you actually got it done here? It's not just one and done for you. Um, right after the fight, there was already, oh, yeah, so, you know, you want to, you want to talk, we'll give you some time and we can, you know, Bellator already came to me and was asking me if you wanted to talk, you know, on Monday and Tuesday. And I was like, most definitely, I'm, you know, so they gave me some time to decompress and, you know, they, they sent their contract out, did my, did my reading on it. And yeah, I like it, man. And just, I'm here. I'm here to stand. I'm hoping that they do another Hawaii card at the end of this year. Cause you know, I'll definitely promote that. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So it's a done deal. Frank, can we get the um, breaking news. Done deal. You have signed a multi fight deal with Beltor. Yes, sir. Nice. Yes, Congratulations. Sir. Does it feel like you like, is this a weight lifted off your shoulders after what happened last year with the UFC? Like you have a home now. You don't have to wonder about when the next fight is coming The pay. Like you're, you're now established. You're with the, you know, the, the number two promotion hey, in, the, in the U S. Yes, I mean, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm happy. I can take care of my responsibilities and pay the bills. But you know, I'm here, I'm here to be the best and get to that title, bro. And I'm not gonna walk over anybody. I won't earn my stripes and you know, give everyone a show and I'll get there, bro. No doubt, the Hawaiian wave continues. Did you feel like people <laughs> were writing you off after the end of your UFC run? And do you feel like you have something to prove? Oh, I mean, I, um, I'm pretty sure they were, but. That's that's how they feel. I don't feel like that at all. I, if anybody gonna write themselves off, it's me. So I didn't, and I didn't. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm still here. I'm still getting better. I definitely feel like I performed way better than my last four performances, and it's only gonna get better. I got I got a lot to work on. I definitely wasn't 
I'm happy with the win, but I'm definitely not happy with my performance. I took like over 20 leg kicks, bro. Right. <laughs> it's unnecessary, but at least it wasn't my face. Usually it's my face. So <laughs> how's your leg How feeling you doing, now, bro? Oh, I'm good, bro. You want me to do the hula for you? No, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm good, bro. It was, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's, uh, it's healthy. I'm ready to go again. And and so for you right now in, in the state of your career, like where, where do you, how many more years do you feel like you have left? You've been doing this for a bit. Do you feel like this is your last run? How, how are you viewing this? Uh, I mean, well, I am 34, bro, but I'm, I feel younger than when I was 24. Like wow. I, my, everything is the, yeah. Everything, everything feels, everything feels great for me. Like I don't have any, I don't have anything stopping me from wanting to, to stop fighting until I have to stop fighting. I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to keep doing it till I can. And then when I can, I can't, but fighting is, is still my path. And martial arts is always going to be a part of my life, bro. I've been fighting since I came out with my mom and I'm going to keep fighting. <laughs> Does anything piss you off, Yancey? You're always so smiley, happy. Does anything make you mad? Um, anything annoy you? Um, yeah, bro. It's, but it's a practice to keep a law, you know, a law is, and love is supposed to be unconditional and it's easy for people to, it's easy to give love when you, when, when you're happy, but you know, do it when people are negative to you and the world's in chaos and shit's not going your way. That's, that's to me, like, that's the real challenge of being human. Last year was a real challenge for me, bro. You know, I lost, I lost my contract. I lost a, I lost, I was, I lost a long-term relationship. I lost a lot of things. And I was like, Oh, bro, I guess when you hit rock bottom, the only way is up. Wow. <laughs> you, know, you look up, you just see the sun and everything's bright, bro. So, you know, if you're not ready to fight, if you're not ready to feel the hate and the, and the darkness, bro, you're not going to be ready to feel the brightness and the love. So you got to take both. You got to take both. And I just choose to be optimistic about all my situations because there's worse in this world, bro. And wow. you know, like I'm just very, very fortunate. I wish more people. I wish I was like you. I wish I looked at the bright side. Everything is glass half empty. <laughs> hey, bro, I just, hey, I just keep trying to plant seeds, and when people want to water that seed for themselves, you know, I'll be here to keep, to keep, you know, talking, talking bright. Oh shit! Oh no, you probably got a call there, right? Or did he close? He jumped off. You know what happened? He probably got a call and uh, and shut off his Zoom. There I am. Look at look at me. See me there? Whoop whoop. It's like the the many faces of oh and there we go. Um all right, well a couple more minutes with the anti what a what a happy go lucky guy. Golly. I wish I was he you know he actually reminds me a lot of he reminds me of Frank a lot, like just always in a good mood, just spreading sunshine. I think it really, it's really you, nice of you. Yeah, do you see the comparison? Absolutely. Yeah. What an unbelievable guy. Um Oh, I see this tweet here from Damon, uh, Henry Cejudo's manager, Ali Abdelaziz, denied that there was ever talks about sending Triple C to one championship in a trade for Arjun Buller. Uh, Ali's had a pretty good couple days on uh, Twitter, I would say. I mean, what, man, did you see uh, Canelo dunk on him? I don't know what was a better dunk. Canelo's dunk on Ali or uh, John ja Morant's dunk last night? I mean, both poster worthy. I would put both posters up on the studio here the actual poster of the dunk and then the tweet the quote retweet tremendous poster as well <laughs> yeah is he there yep. yeah. oh yancy what's up hey what's right, happening man. coconut wireless that's some wind in the coconut wireless no i feel you i feel you <laughs> we have yancy here or no oh there he is oh yeah. Okay. You're back. You're good. Um, okay. So yeah, you were saying always, I was just wondering, was that, would you say in retrospect, one of the toughest periods of your life going through all of that? Um, I think, I think emotionally. Yeah. You know, like I'm always a, a happy individual or a joyful individual. And there was a lot of things that, bro, I wake up, my, my goal is to just be a responsible kid, bro. What do kids, what do kids want in life, bro? Well, you have kids right there, Neil? I do. Yeah. I have three. Okay, and what do kids do when they wake up? What do they want? Uh, they want. I mean, I guess they want to play. They want happiness. They just right. Dang, right there, exactly. Kids want to be happy, bro. Talk to an adult. They talk about bills. They talk about problems. They talk about things that you know inevitable that they gotta take care of. What do kids talk about? Bro, they're always thinking about life and things they want to do and like. That's what I want, bro. I just want to wake up and be happy. Just take care of my responsibilities and pay my bills. 
you know, Ali. be real chap on this pad if I can, but you know, have that. Nobody messes with a responsible kid. They're like, oh, look at this kid over here doing his thing, making everything happy. He's happy. Nobody hates on that. Like, that's my goal, bro. Just wake up like a kid and be happy and talk about life, bro. Not talk about problems. That shit, you gotta solve your problems. Everybody get problems, bro. Like, you know, every time I every time I hear complaints, especially if it's from myself, I'm always like, huh. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, right, everybody get problems. Everybody can complain. Uh, suck it up, bro. Monday's still gonna come. I love it. This is incredible. I feel <laughs> yeah, so yeah. good about life right now. I remember when you fought uh, <laughs> Cowboy Cerrone, and 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 you yeah. remember you lost that one. You went to hug his grandmother. And people were like, oh, you know, you were being too nice and this and that. But this is really you. Yeah, this is who you are. This isn't a hey, front. Bro, when when you get when you get to the main event and when you in UFC and Bellator talk, show me how it's done. Mm. Okay, I'm looking forward to your next UFC fight, your next main card. Uh, you know, like, bro, you get, everybody's got an opinion, bro, but you ain't there. And I operate out of love, bro. I don't operate out of fear. I don't need act off. I can turn my switch on, on and off, bro. Like, that's me. I ain't no punk. And I show people how I want to be treated. That's it. Mm. You know, I never had a street fight because I show people how I want to be treated. And I operate out of love. It's sim- that's, that's simple. And if people think that's soft, cross this line and get your ass beat. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you know, like I'm not, I'm not, I ain't no punk, but I'm not gonna get punk either. Like, and I will always be this way. If you got a problem with me, come up and solve it, bro. <laughs> I love it. I love. Okay, so um, yeah. at, at at this point, here you are. You've got this deal with Bellator. Uh, it sounds like they might. Are they gonna go back to Hawaii? Have they told you? I mean, I don't. They haven't told me, but I heard talks of it. And usually, oh, they usually have. They give Hawaii a card every December. Mm. They've been coming until COVID happened, and the yeah, few yeah. years they didn't. But usually, every December they give Hawaii a card. So, come on, Rob Bellator, Scott, let's give Hawaii another great Christmas present. <laughs> and, and do you live in Hawaii, or is, is Hawaii yes. okay? Yes. And so, when you go yes. train with yes. the the Diaz Bros and the team down there, you just go for a few whatever it is. I just go cross train, yeah. And yeah. Go, you know, check if everything at home is working. And you go pay my, you know, I gotta go pay my dues. Go 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 over there and earn my stripes again. I still Nate Diaz Academy. I'm Nick Diaz Academy. is still it's still my family, bro. And I always gonna be a part of them. I'm just the extension. But, you know, I, I train all at home. I'm homely in Hawaii. I'm glad Max and all of that. We all we we all can collaborate. And when I go to California, that's my brothers too. That's right. What's <laughs> I mean? We got to figure out this Nate Diaz situation, right? Nathan Diaz. I mean, come on, yes. the guy can't yes. fight. What is going on? It's I actually think it's 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 getting uncomfortable at this point. The guy's been healthy for a year. Well, he can't fight. What are we doing? Everybody's like, wow, like what is like the biggest thing for Nate that's gonna happen? He should fight this guy. He should fight that. I'm like, honestly, I think the best thing for. Nate's career that would happen right now is if he got released from the UFC. <laughs> like, that would just blow him up. And you know what I mean? And like, I don't know. I think it always has to do with money. You know, you see Dustin wants to fight him. The Nate wants to fight Dustin and get, get his fight out. So I just think, you know, I think you can connect the dots, bro. Yes. <laughs> and why UFC doesn't want to, you know, let him go. But I feel that the biggest thing for right now that Nick that could ever happen for Nate is if he was released to USC because that man knows his brand he knows his work and there's a lot of people that want to invest in him and make him rich God. more rich he would make so much money if he went on the open market and all these people can bid yes. on his services whether it's Bellator whether yeah. it's a Jake Paul fight whether it's his, I mean like the possibility and, and oh, oh by the way maybe he's go back to the UFC at some point as well but can we let this guy fight for God's sakes I mean what is going on here yes. he's being held hostage yeah Yes, uh, that's why he had to come to Hawaii, decompress, watch me fight a little, you know, get back, get back to to Cali and go back and train. So, honestly, when it comes to me, I don't really talk about the the, the fight business to him because that's my family. You know, yeah. there's all these people that always trying to get to know the info like that. So when I when I when I'm with him, like I just keep it as my I brother. Hi, he's well watched for his well being. Yeah. So, but he's moving and he's gonna be making moves because. Nate can't Nate can't sit still. He's right. been sitting still for a while, bro. How's Nick doing? Is he all right? Yes, he's doing good from what I see. You know, I try to call him and connect when we can, but he's doing he's been doing a lot of seminars. So okay. he's back to teaching. He's back to teaching a lot of people. And you know, I think he's in a great headspace and he's um he'll be back this year for sure. Well, I hear the birds chirping over there. It's paradise where you are. 
Uh, much love yes. to my friend. Mahalo, aloha, all those uh, things. You're the man, Yancy. Thank you, Ariel. Uh, much respect. Congratulations on the big win and congratulations on the contract as well. It was a beautiful scene. It was great to see you get that moment in Hawaii. And on top of all of that, great to see you get the W and then the new contract. I mean, what a weekend for you, my friend. Well-deserved. Well done. Enjoy uh, it. Aloha, man. All right. Take care. There he is, Yancy Medeiros. Uh, one of the good guys in the game. I mean, how could you not like Yancy Medeiros? Always smiling, always happy, always in a good mood, always just, I mean, that aloha spirit.